Hey, how's it going everyone? Justin again, as always, thanks for watching my channel. How's it going? I had a lot of requests for uh, going to Walmart and doing a walk around and see what kind of tools they have. And maybe that store might be a little bit more convenient than some of the other stores that we've done walk arounds in so far. So that being said, Clark Griswold's going to Wally World. Woo! And we're taking the wagon, baby. One. All right, so you guys have seen this hyper tough box that I did in the uh, roadside assistance emergency kit video that I did. I had to purchase it. Uh, not just for that video, I purchased it because I thought this was a great grab and go toolbox. Offers plenty of storage up top, couple of drawers uh, that lock in the back there. There's a built in arm on the lid, so when you go to close the lid, it locks the drawers shut. So you just got to make sure you push them in real good for it to fully secure so that way you don't dump your tools all over the place make sure you push them in good but anyways i gave this to my stepson man and i was like hey you needed a box for the back of your car i think you need to start putting some emergency stuff in it i also gave him one of those uh, battery jump packs as well and i was like we're gonna start putting some tools in here for you in case you do end up you know stranded on the side of the road you're gonna need some stuff and uh, he totally agreed i've shown him how to do his brakes i've you know showed him how to take his tire off and where to put the jack and all that stuff. Just real good information, you know, father-son information kind of stuff. All right, so I have a rigid shop vac. I would say pretty close in comparison as far as price. I don't know as far as quality. I'm happy with the rigid. In fact, I think we got it on a Christmas special, which is why I'm so happy with it because I think I paid around 45 bucks for it. All right, so looking at some of the smaller sets here, they have a, a SAE combination wrench set. I didn't see a metric one. I'm not sure if they were sold out. So I cannot tell you if the metric one was a complete set, but I could tell you some of the other wrench sets they had made by HyperTuff, we're, they were incomplete. Here's a nice little quarter inch socket set. They got the deep, they got the shallow. Look, I think you're gonna spend like less than 25 bucks maybe for both sets or something like that. Um, yeah, like 10 bucks and 15 bucks. So 25 bucks for the whole thing. Look guys, if you're going to Walmart to purchase a socket set or wrenches, you're in a bad way or every single store is closed except for Walmart and you need to be able to do something. So say it's, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night, you want to go grab something real quick from the store or something. Your battery doesn't start. So you gotta, you know, you found Walmart and you, get a battery and you got to replace it. So now you got a few things that you need to do. You need sockets, you might need a wrench, you need a battery of course to install it yourself. So like I said, if you're buying tools from Walmart, you're in a bad way and that's pretty much my only reasoning for buying tools from Walmart. Now that's not to say that every single tool here is absolutely worthless because obviously it's a tool. It's going to serve its purpose. It's going to Get the job done when you need it. And if it's 10 o'clock at night and all the other stores are closed, like, I don't know, uh, let's say your local auto parts store or your Harbor Freight and they're all closed up, yeah, man, look, go there, pick, don't, don't go buku wild, okay, because their socket sets are absolutely ridiculous. Just get the cheap one that you can toss into the back of the car after you're done changing your battery out or whatever. But again, I mean, not the greatest quality of stuff, definitely incomplete sets, but at least you have an option. You know, it's late at night, you have an option. I do own some tools that I have purchased from Walmart, and I'll share those with you throughout this video. Look, man, a couple of them I just bought, so I don't really have, you know, a full review of them just yet. And there are some that I've owned for a while that I actually find that are actually really good value. Lifetime warranty, what's it all about? How's it work? I don't know. You know, to be honest, I've never bought any of these Stanley sets. I don't know if they mail your socket off and mail you in a new one, if they open another set, if they make you bring the whole set in and exchange the whole set for another whole set. I've got no idea how this warranty works when it comes to buying Stanley socket sets. 
All right, looking at some of their specialty sockets they had, they did have some SAE and metric Allens as well as the Torx bits, so that's nice that they have those on the shelf. They did sell channel lock. I was, in, I was happy to see that that was there. They had some ratchet wrenches, again, 20 bucks, so probably pretty comparable in price to Harbor Freight. I did see some Crescent on the shelf. The Stanley pliers, I'm just not too, they're just not that good at quality. Let's just take these slip joints, for example. So much wiggle and movement. I don't know that that little tiny rivet fastener thing that's holding this whole thing together is going to hold up. It may just break. I don't know. The handles were sure comfortable. The handles were comfortable. I just don't think the quality's there. Uh, at least they had Irwin. So I do own Irwin Vice Grips. Been using them for a long time. Uh, I do have some tongue and groove channel lock pliers that are amazing. I do not own any Stanley pliers, so I cannot give you the full review outside of just showing you that one that had a, a lot of movement in it. So I just think they're really poorly made. I do. That's just my opinion on that. The pricing, I guess, seemed pretty fair. I, you know, what are they, five bucks a piece or something? Yeah, six bucks, ten bucks. I don't know. Okay, I did just pick up this striking pry bar to throw in the back of this emergency kit. And, uh, you know, I think it's a pretty nice pry bar for what it's worth. I'd compare that to the Craftsman ones that they had. And those Craftsman ones are heavy duty. I've also owned these uh, files from HyperTuff. Those things are great. They work great with welding. I actually gave a, a full set of those away to somebody at the community college. I think they're great for you know welding projects or wood projects or whatever you got going on. Uh, maybe you might use a different file for wood. Screwdriver set. Screwdriver set was a bit janky, but at least it was a complete set and they did have some stubbies. And of course you got your tape measures. I like the fact they got the high vis so that way you don't lose it because let's face it, we've all lost the tape measure a time or two. I did pick the Sheffield uh, knife and multi-tool set up for the wife. She is killer stoked to have that. Nice little tool for her to throw in the truck on the go. They did sell some lubricants like WD-40, uh, rust penetrant, white lithium grease, um, the hammers. Again, I, I just got this two and a half pound hammer. I think it's pretty good quality for what it's worth. They're under 10 bucks. So I would say hell yeah. All right, this was kind of cool. A little magnetic tray, a grabby tool, and a magnet for five bucks. Pick set, also around five or six bucks. Thought the pick set looked halfway decent. I would compare that to a Harbor Freight set, but I like the handles a little bit better than the Harbor Freight ones, so might, might find yourself picking those up. This, okay, let's talk about their socket sets for a minute. I was trying to go back and forth, trying to determine which the better set was. To be honest, I did like this set probably better than the other one. It is a little bit on the, was it $20 north as far as pricing goes, but I think it was a better set. The HyperTuff toolbox is worth it. These items here in front of me look like they were worth it. So if you find yourself at Walmart, these are some of the things that I'd recommend for tossing into your emergency kit. They looked like they were good quality and I picked a handful of those up when I was there. All right, moving on with the video, we're gonna take a look at a few other things that they have at the Walmart. So I was looking at their cordless stuff. I did see that they had the HyperTuff lineup. I don't know much about HyperTuff. I've used Black & Decker in the past. I think Black & Decker is garbage, that's my opinion. Um, but the HyperTuff series looked pretty all right. The pricing seemed pretty fair. At least they had the blades and some cutoff wheels and sanding discs. They also, I think I saw a skill so they did sell skill as well. There was a skill uh, uh, sawzall. So they had a skill sawzall there. And I was like, hey, that's nice. 40 bucks. Nice. Happy to see skill in the, in the cabinet. I've owned skill before. I like them. I don't know what I did with it. And they also sold some drills, some power cable stuff for the 110. Or you can get the cordless. So the option was entirely yours with this stuff. Uh, somebody that owns HyperTuff can feel free to share their experience in the comments. I'd like to hear about it. I don't know much about the HyperTuff stuff. Is it as good as skill? Would you compare it to Black & Decker and pretty much junk? This boss stitch, I think that's what it's called. Never used them. No idea anything about them. They looked pretty rugged. They kind of reminded me of the Hitachi brand. 
And they had various drill bits and adapters in here. Again, here's some cordless uh, hyper tough stuff. Here's the Black & Decker lineup that they had. Some of the 110 stuff, some of the cordless options. Uh, they had individual charging packs. So if you were losing yours, you could pick one up if you lost yours. They had some Dremels, so it was nice to see some Dremels. They also had a lot of adapters for the Dremels, which I was happy to see. All right, so this little tiny set would be like a set that I'm talking about. So if you need your battery changed and you just, you're on the fly, I would buy this little kit. I probably wouldn't buy any other kit from there because like I said, the sets were very much incomplete. I've bought into these in a pinch. They're nice throwaway sets. You use it for what you gotta use it for and then dump it. This wrench set was probably the only complete metric wrench set that I saw and it went up to 25 millimeter. So I thought that was kind of nice. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to kind of show you real quick on the back of that Stanley kit we were looking at. You can see, not too impressive, definitely missing a lot of pieces as far as sizes. Deeps were a little bit on the small side, they didn't have enough deep sockets there. You got the one spark plug socket, a handful of wrenches, nothing too crazy. Also, there was incomplete sizes, no 15 millimeter. Why wouldn't you offer 15? I don't even think they offered a 13, I might be wrong. But for 88 bucks, look, I think you can find a better set elsewhere, so I'd stay away from that kind of stuff. They did have some boost packs, some jumper cables. You know, this is emergency type situation stuff here. So if your battery just needs a quick jump, or maybe it's just dead because you left the light on, you can jump start it, get back on the road, take one of these charge packs home with you, recharge your battery when you get home, and then you should be good for the next day. Because I have had customers come in where they've Left the dome light on while they're in the parking lot. Um, they also had some power inverters and some other things that looked kind of uh, interesting. I haven't seen a lot of this stuff before, so I'm just trying to get a closer look. If somebody owns something on this shelf, share it down in the comments. Let us know what your experience has been with uh, any of these jump packs or chargers. I'm not sure how good EverStart is, to be honest, you know? I would be curious to know, though. Might save somebody... Uh, quite a few bucks because I think my Versa Pro 2 cost me a lot of money and I think I paid a pretty good amount for another one. I forgot what it's called. Okay, don't get these terminals though. So if your terminal's bad, don't buy these. I don't know why, okay, my college instructor told us no, that they're really crappy. They don't get good connection. I believe him. I'm not going to even bother. I would get something like this over those. Don't get this. This thing's like, it just cuts into the wires. It pinches the wires uh, going through to the cable. And you just don't make good contact. I think they're junk. All right, a lot of people do not like Fram, but they also sold some Mobile One stuff. We saw Mobile One there. Uh, what else did they have? I think they had, uh, yeah, k &N. I also saw some of the cheaper ones that they use. So if you're getting your $20 oil change, this is probably the filter that they're using, I would imagine, the Walmart brand. They did have some dealership specific oil filters and I thought that was kind of cool. Here's your Mopar ones for my Jeep guys out there. They also had some Toyota brand ones. They had AC Delco ones for my Chevy guys. We also saw some Motocraft for my Ford guys. So it was cool to see the dealership specific oil filters there outside of just Fram and Supertech. Uh, I don't have any opinion about the Canon. All right, so oil is pretty much oil for the most part. They did have some Supertech. They did have the EverStart batteries. I think that's the only battery that they that they carry. Their warranty, I think you can get like a one year or two year warranty on these batteries. Some of them were a little bit longer. I'm not sure how the warranty works. I think you can prorate it. So yeah, there's a five year, but it's prorated. So it's all, the warranty's only good for like two, three years free replacement, and then it's a prorated thing for the next two. But they did have some Motocraft oil, some Quaker State. Uh, I saw some Pennzoil. I love Valvoline, so naturally I started looking for Valvoline. They had Castrol. Here's some Shell. A lot of guys like the Shell or the Rotella. Here's my Valvoline. There's my Royal Purple. I bet I got some Royal Purple guys out there somewhere. Here's the high mileage stuff, some of the full synthetics. And then, of course, we got the Super Tech stuff. I'm not sure who bottles the Super Tech stuff, but if it saves you a few bucks, I've used it in the past. I don't really have any problems with Super Tech oil. And the coolant, look, 10 bucks, 100% concentrate. You can dump 50-50 into your car. Dump 50 in, add 50% water, 
add another 50% and you've got two jugs of coolant basically for 10 bucks. So that's a hell of a deal. And it says it works on all year, make, model, etc. I know a lot of guys are hung up on the color thing. Hey, when I was at the dealership, same exact thing. But I've heard that they have some universal coolants that actually do work well. I don't know. I'll believe it when I see it. In time, if I see a car come in with sludging, I'm going to say false. Because at the dealership, we were always taught mixing colors is a no-no. You know, we got three-year, five-year, ten-year. If you mix it, it sludges up and it's nasty and disgusting stuff. And I've seen heater cores plugged up and I've seen radiators plugged up and thermostats gummed up. Uh, but at the independent shop where we have a universal coolant, uh, we've drained and filled, we've topped off with it, we've flushed systems with it, and uh, I haven't seen not one single car come in with any kind of sludging issue as a result. So maybe some of the universal coolants that they have out nowadays really are compatible. I'd like somebody else to comment on this. I know I uh, did a video a little over a year ago um, kind of with a response to Astro Auto Repairs as far as how at the dealership mixing colors was a no-no and that there was no way that they made a universal coolant. Uh, I'm here today telling you guys I stand corrected on this one. Now I've been at the independent shop for what uh, going on a little over a year and a half now and I haven't seen not one car come in with any issue. But all right, that was my trip to Walmart. I had a great time looking at some stuff. Like I said in the video, if you're at Walmart buying tools, you're in a pinch. Other than that, I wouldn't go there. It's just, I mean, they have a small handful of stuff that I thought was worthwhile. Clearly, I bought a couple of things myself, but I wouldn't go spending an entire paycheck on a full tool set from them. Let's, let's just say that. So that's all I got. Thanks for hanging out with Clark Griswold. Hope you enjoyed Wally World. We'll see you guys next time. Deuces.